to. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lili Aliza. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So let me start with my slide. Okay, I will talk about the clinical management of ocular syphilis. Okay, in this uh, presentation, I have no financial or property interest in any matter or method mentioned. Okay, I start with the first, uh, the first case, male, uh, 30 years old, came to our right clinic. The chief complaint of blood patient since uh, 10 months ago. So, uh, he already came to some of the allergies, and the last treatment was to test along 32 milligrams. Patient was also male sex with male, and no laboratory test from continuous treatment. Uh, in the first visit, we have a uh, patient with notice on uh, on both eye, almost hand of one and one uh, one of the counting fingers, where there's a normal other segment. Patient also have obvious haste, and we also have like the uh, retinal intruders on the right eye and the right sitting vessels on the left right eye. Uh, as the first line uh, examination, we check for HIV screening and also reactive, and for RPR and PPHA also reactive and under the very normal moods. So we, we diagnose this patient with open syphilis on both eye and HIV positive. And then patient was treated with one gram set reactions uh, four times daily. And because patient also uh, HIV, so we didn't give patient with the method that is all And last we said, this opportunity improved to 6.6 six and 6.7.5. Six, uh, and the second case, uh, male 40 years old, the decrease is already since the same five months. And also patient have letters on both eye, fever and for two weeks. Uh, patient admitted that he often changed partners and was very sex close and recently married. The physical activity on both eye was night perception, and we also have we see we also saw patient with the final white capes and anterior cells three plus, and then the posterior and negative light reflex. And the first copy, uh, the first very hazy, uh, first new round of lignal head and blood margin and hyperemic. We also check the for uh, the UTIs, and then uh, at the temporary treatment, we give patient with the breathing salon and a drop next to eye drop. From the, the diagnosis was HIV and mild drop on UTIs, suspected that the policy finished, and we also consult patients to internal medicine, neurology, and HIV as clinic. Uh, from the laboratory test, the RPR was non-reactive, non yeah, but we also suspected this uh, as protein effect, negative response due to the high data of the RPR. And then we asked the pathology uh, laboratory to check again with the four times the emission, and the RPR was uh, reactive. And then we gave patient with the set reaction to gram for two weeks, then we also continue patient with the lens that we can to 2.5 million in the same three times. And then because patient also uh, CMV positive from the PCR, we also give patient with lens for the intravenous. And then we then for uh, at the four weeks, we improved to 660 and 618 with the fluoroscopy with the pupil uh, optic disc and uh, on, uh, on the left eye set normal. The third case, uh, patient elder, older, 70 years old, with blood vision since the last five months. History of cataract surgery was seven years ago, no history of cystic disease. This is the condition of the right eye and the left eye with the vision activity and movement. And we also have like a defect in all quadrant, especially in the peripheral side. And also patient have eyes prolapse, prolapse on the right eye. And then after the work up for the uh, inflammatory uh, diseases and also infection, patient have reactive for RPR and TPHA uh, and negative for HIV. So we treat patient with the mandatory penicillin injection and also we give patient with acrobins ointment and methotrexate and other theoprin. And the macronia patch graph was performed on both eyes with this uh, okay. And then this is the five months follow up yeah, for the right eye. Uh, we see that the cornea, especially in the peripheral side, is uh, getting better and also on the left side. 
So, kalau sifilis, ya, kalau sebaik setiap kita tidak pernah nampang hidung, in our, uh, our hospital, ya, previously, we, we only have two cases in 2014, 2015, but now, uh, the cases of the kalau sifilis is uh, increased. Ya, yeah, uh, within three months, we have the uh, uh, cases. The ocular manifestation can be found such as like decreased visual acuity, pain, blood, transgenic, and photophobia, and sometimes also patient have glaucoma. In severe condition, we can also the intracellular keratitis, intracellular vasculitis, and apneumopathy. Most frequent from of the pneumopathies with uh, as possible pneumopathies about sixty percent and pneumopathies. The diagnosis of neurosyphilis can be made when a reactive syphilis serological test. Is found with one or a combination of various abnormalities in the form of reactive non-terminal tests like a RPR from the sensitivity of blood. So the consideration for CSF examination in sickness patient if there are signs and symptoms of improvement of the central nervous system. And also like the treatment failure within six months. Uh, especially patient with HIV and non-trepan or serum peter um, more than 1-32. Uh, uh, there are uh, some report, one report that about um, as of our CPS, masquerading as bilateral peripheral strategy, that is like uh, our condition. So in this case, the, the patient had a positive, yeah, and then the intensity was treated, uh, was And given in this patient also in the uh, in this journals. So uh, most of our syphilis as we uh, will treat it as neurosyphilis, and the recommended treatment therapy for our syphilis, yeah, is according to the neurosyphilis regime. Uh, we we usually give patient with proper intensity, but now the proper intensity is quite difficult uh, in our hospital, yeah. And then why some of patient we treat with the safe reaction? Uh, two grams, uh, two grams daily intravenously for 10 or 14 uh, days. Beta-ray medicine is not recommended in case of mucosyphilis because of the high reported rate of treatment failure. But yeah, we can also give patient at benzatine penicillin as a junctive therapy, uh, like our third case. Yeah. In the treatment information, uh, some. Sometimes we also can give give patient with immunosuppressive uh, drugs, yeah. As long as we also start patient with antibiotic treatment, and then we also check the RPS serology uh, repeated, yeah, for every six, twelve, until twenty uh, four months. Okay, prognosis of the syphilis mostly good, yeah. Can improve with the appropriate therapy. And the cure rate of neurosyphilis is about of uh, 60 percent. Yeah, which is equally occurring in 40 of cases. Yeah, uh, this is a report from the region and the Mara. Uh, in our case, we can see that the visual acuity of the first patient can be better, and the second patient, because uh, the condition they still have uh, tail of the head. And then the third patient, because patient also have peripheral ulcerative keratitis, but if we see after the treatment and the surgery, uh, it improves. So as a take-home message, recognize the typical clinical symptoms for every etiology of uveitis. The peripheral ulcerative keratitis is uh, recommended there. Yeah? And then do the basic laboratory and the antigen test to test to exclude the infection. In our hospital, we have a protocol. So for every uh, uveitis, we will check and we will rule out the infection. Yeah, and then we also check like tuberculosis, syphilis, and HIV. Treat judiciously uh, and collaborate with uh, some of the departments such as dermatology, internal medicine, and also neurology. So we will get a uh, good uh, result. For every patient in ocular syphilis, I think that's all, Doctor Yulia Ziza. Yes, thank you, Doctor Lukman. Uh, very interesting cases. So we can learn uh, from the experiences uh, about 
how the syphilis uh, masquerading the appearance of uh, any uveitis case or even the peripheral ulcerative keratitis. So we will have the discussion later uh, after all of the presenters uh, presenting all of the pres uh, their uh, people their study. So the second uh, presenter is uh, Dr. Burhana uh, Mawarasti. Uh, she is a second year of, uh, of residence. Uh, now um, she will talk about the atypical optic neuritis associated with tuberculosis. So uh, please. Uh, Share your presentation, Dr. Rabuna. Thank you, ma'am, for the introduction. Uh, I hope my slide is visible right now. Yes, good evening. Right uh, yeah. Thank you. Good evening, Professor, Doctor, and also fellow colleagues. Uh, my name is Good I would like to present a case about atypical optic neuritis associated with tuberculosis. So, uh, we will move on to this illustration. A uh, female, uh, 37 years old, with she complained of pain on left eye a week before admission. So, uh, uh, two months before admission, the patient had a moderate uh, severity of pain on the left eye that aggravated while glancing. She also had blurry vision, especially on the temporal and also the inferior side. Uh, however, a double vision was denied. So then the patient seek treatment to the local hospital, and then after being uh, admitted, she was given a high dose of methylprednisol and intravenously for three consecutive days. However, the pain had gotten worse, and then uh, the patient referred to uh, the neuro ophthalmology department in our hospital. The systemic condition was unremarkable at that time during admission. However, the patient had a previous history of gundra tuberculosis and already finished the treatment in 2017 for nine months. And from uh, the ophthalmological examination, during the initial visit, uh, the right eye was within normal limit. However, on the left eye, we could see that uh, the visual acuity decreased from, uh, was uh, 6 over 60 and after correction was still 6 over 24 within normal IOP. And there was also a positive relative eye and popularity defect. And uh, from the confrontation test uh, on the left eye, there was a decrease on the visual uh, function of uh, the left eye in the temporal side. However, the uh, default VR chart is still within normal limit. And as uh, we've seen over here in the photos of photography, there was a hospital edema that showed uh, the optic disc uh, swelling. And, uh, also hyperemia and uh, scissor hemorrhage or peripapal hemorrhage. And then uh, within uh, the next two weeks, uh, when the patient came to our clinic again, uh, the left eye, uh, the visual equity of the left eye had decreased to only a half meter over 60. Uh, the IOP is still in a uh, normal limit. And from the fundus examination, we could see that uh, there was more likely a granuloma or lesions that compress uh, the optic nerve, causing uh, edema and also optic uh, disc swelling. And then uh, from the OCT, so we did uh, the optic disc uh, OCT. And when we compare to the right eye, we could see that uh, on the left eye, the contour of uh, the papil uh, had diminished compared to the right eye. And then also the RNF, the RNFL uh, thickness of the left eye was outside the normal limit. And from uh, the macular OCT, we could see that uh, the tuberculum or the granuloma might also uh, compress uh, the macula causes a uh, separation between the RPE layer and also the above layer. And we could also see that uh, there's a loss of uh, RPE cells over here in macula. And uh, from the laboratory examination, uh, there was a lipocytosis with uh, increased uh, blood sedimentation rate. And also from the immunological test, uh, so we uh, conducted a uh, tuberculin uh, skin test and it showed a positive result with a duration of uh, 15 millimeters. Others uh, were within normal limit. And from uh, the chest x ray over here, we could see that uh, there are uh, 
multiple uh, calcification and also fibrosis uh, that indicates of chronic uh, tuberculosis. And uh, from the MRI uh, with contrast, uh, there were no uh, lesions or a tumor or a mass that uh, suggests or causing compression uh, to your optic nerve. But uh, we could see that uh, over here there is a thickening on the optic nerve that uh, indicates uh, neuritis. So then we assess the patient with atypical optic neuritis of the left eye with probable ocular tuberculosis. Then we plan to consult other patients with the pulmonology department and initiate the methyl paranethyl and uh, two days after the initiation of anti tuberculosis therapy. Then we plan to control uh, the patient immediately after the initiation of uh, tuberculosis treatment. So uh, this is uh, the resume or uh, the progression of this, of this patient. Uh, in uh, January, uh, during the third visit to the clinic, the visual acuity uh, again decreased to only hand movement with good projection. And from the from this examination, also show still showing uh, optic this uh, swelling with uh, tuberculoma. And then uh, when the patient uh, came to the pulmonology department, they uh, started to give the uh, anti tubercolin anti tuberculosis treatment, and also uh, conducted a sputum examination of uh, sputum and also gene expert. And then uh, during next uh, visit within two weeks, the visual equity again decreased to only light perception with good projections. And uh, this is when we uh, started to initiate the therapy of a method for isolate and high dose. And then uh, in February 27, the laboratory examination uh, results came out and uh, the leukocytes, uh, there was also leukocytosis. However, the sputumen also gene expert examination did not find uh, any mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, bacteria. And then uh, during between uh, March and April, the visual acuity uh, improved to uh, hand movement uh, with good projections, but remained stable. And uh, during the last uh, visit, uh, the photoscopy uh, showed that uh, there's more likely uh, the pupil the pupil began to became uh, more pale uh, with uh, also with a uh, tuberculoma. Uh, unfortunately, we could not. Uh, documented uh, well uh, of the fundoscopy examination. So uh, we move on to the literature review. Uh, tuberculosis is still considered to be the good imitator of any ocular uh, disease uh, or ocular infection. And globally, uh, mainly the fact around 1.7 billion people worldwide, and Indonesia is still listed at uh, the top three for disease itself. And uh, the numbers that uh, you've seen over here are the prevalence of tuberculosis that are uh, these between cases of varieties that associated with ocular tuberculosis. And uh, for the prevalence in Indonesia is still quite high, uh, 70%, and then followed by uh, Saudi Arabia around 16%, and North India with 6.86%. Uh, uh, however, for the disease itself, there are no sex or predilection between females and males, and it can also affect both bilateral or unilateral. And for uh, the classification of ocular tuberculosis, it can affect uh, from the anterior part of uh, the eye to the posterior part. And uh, in this case, we had uh, tubercles that causing uh, optic neuritis. And uh, this this type of disease has a really poor prognosis and it can also cause a uh, decrease of visual function rapidly. So tuberculosis mainly affects the lungs but can also spread through all the lymphatic systems and also disseminate uh, hematogenously to the ocular. And it can form latency within all the macrophages uh, and also in the RPE cells as we have known in the retina. These RPE cells uh, also act as uh, similar to a uh, macrophage as uh, the RPE cells have the same uh, ocular surface with a uh, macrophage. 
So in terms of uh, response to inflammation or infections, uh, we've known that there's adaptive and also innate immune system. However, in uh, the ocular tuberculosis, what's uh, unique is that uh, there are two types of mechanisms in the innate immune system, in which the first one is the direct inflammatory response, and then also the second one is uh, the indirect type, which is caused by the autoimmune uh, inflammatory response due to uh, the molecular mimicry between the, uh, the mycobacterium tuberculosis protein antigens with uh, the retinal autoantigens. And this can elicit uh, uh, the pro-inflammatory uh, mediators and cause prolonged uh, uh, course of the disease. So uh, to diagnose uh, the intraocular tuberculosis, uh, this is my uh, literature that I uh, divided uh, based on the clinical diagnostic group between uh, the confirmed, probable, and also possible. And what differentiates between the probable and the possible is that in uh, the probable, uh, there are evidence of uh, chest x-ray that suggesting of uh, the tuberculosis infection. However, in the possible, we could not any we could not find any uh, consistent uh, infection of tuberculosis in the lungs. Uh, but still, uh, we need to confirm with immunological tests such as uh, the tuberculosis uh, skin tests and also uh, or in or uh, immune glomerulus assay. All are there are the history of uh, documented exposure of tuberculosis. So um, this is also a nice review. Uh, now the question is that uh, when should we uh, initiate the therapy of antituberculosis? So uh, in this uh, consensus, uh, from a collaborative study of ocular tuberculosis, they divided based on uh, the clinical phenotype in which uh, when we have cases of uh, several genes like choroiditis, choroidal tuberculomyosis, active retinal vasculitis, we can initiate or start the treatment immediately, whether the chest X-ray uh, indicates uh, negative results, positive, or uh, we might not uh, cannot uh, do the X-ray. However, in cases like uh, multifocal or unifocal choroiditis, intermediate uveitis, panuveitis, and recurrent granulomatous anterior uveitis. Uh, we, we need to confirm uh, with either one or a positive immunological test and also uh, radiology or chest x-ray. So when we found there are no uh, or negative results from the chest x-ray, uh, there is a weak evidence that we need to start uh, the treatment immediately. However, there are minimum uh, conditions uh, for starting the anti-tuberculosis uh, therapy with the content of itself. Um, uh, as you can see, uh, first, uh, in the tuberculosis cases, uh, for example, uh, in the area, uh, we can uh, start uh, therapy immediately when we found a positive result from the HS X-ray. So how a John steroid therapy works? Uh, as we uh, have uh, discussed previously, that the direct inflammatory response, uh, which caused by the hypersensitivity response to uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis antigens. However, in the indirect inflammatory response, uh, happens uh, because of uh, the autoimmune reaction. And these two are persist uh, uh, continuously and uh, both can uh, cause strong chron uh, chronic and uh, recurrent uh, inflammations. And this can uh, prolong the course of the disease. So this is when uh, the combination of uh, steroid with antitubercosis therapy can be initiated. Uh, not only to control the ocular inflammation, but also to limit uh, the damage of the ocular tissue by delaying the hypersensitivity. And as for uh, tech home message, uh, in this case, uh, patients with aneuritis, it can cause rapid decrease of visual functions. And if we delay the treatment, uh, it can uh, be a permanent uh, damage for the visual function. And we still need to consider the uh, course of the disease. As uh, previously, previously, the patient had a uh, history of tuber uh, glandular tuberculosis. We need to think that uh, these two uh, types of diseases are uh, actually related. 
And uh, we also need to consider start the treatment immediately. Uh, so aggressive, but uh, being uh, very cautious because uh, we need to exclude or uh, rule off any type of uh, infections before initiating the treatment. So I think uh, that's all from me. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank you. Calls. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Nurhana. Uh, very interesting case. Um, so uh, everyone who, who will have any kind of questions, you may type your questions at the chat or later we can have discussion at the end of the uh, session. Um, so for the next speaker, I would like to invite Dr. Masaya Ito. Uh, he is a first year resident at the Kyoto Prefectural University of Medicine. He will present a a case presentation with the title New Concept in Cytomegalovirus Retinitis, a Chronic Retinal necro Necrosis. Okay, please have your presentation, Dr. Ito. Yeah, uh, nice to meet you. My name is Masaya Ito. I'm a PGY co resident of Osamoros in KPUM. I'm happy to have this opportunity to talk about a new concept in Cytomegalovirus Retinitis, Chronic <laughs> Retinal Necrosis to everyone at the bi-monthly conference between University of Indonesia and KPUM. Cytomegaloviruses is one of the DNA viruses of the genus Harpy. Antibody retention rate of CMV are as high as 70 to 90 percent, and many people are infected in young children, most of whom are infected subclinically. CMV is recently infecting 50 to 80 percent of the world population, and the latent infection rate is higher in Asia than in the West. In cases, reactivation in immunocompromised conditions such as AIDS, immuno immunosuspensive drug users, and post hematopoietic stem cell transplant patients, resulting in formation of the eye, lungs, and gastrointestinal tract. You know, there are two patterns of ocular manifestation caused by CMV. Cytomegalovirus coronal endocytitis, iritis, and cytomegalovirus retinitis. In Japan, cytomegalovirus ocular infection is diagnosed by real-time PCR with aqueous humor. Multiplex storage phase storage PCR test is comprehensive for multiple ocular infectious major pathogenic microorganisms, viruses, bacteria, and fungi from specimens such as aqueous humor and vitreous. All hospitals use direct strip PCR, a multiplex real-time PCR kit. It is quick and simple, requiring only one minute of manual many questions and 35 to 55 minutes of testing time. Furthermore, it is capable of exhaustivity and detecting nine different viruses by PCR directly from a sample of only 20 microliters. And it is characterized by high reproducibility and low interfacility viability. Here, I summarize cytomegaloviruses eye infections. The first one is about cytomegaloviruses coronal endotheriitis, iritis. It is more common in immunocompetent, healthy individuals. Symptoms include foggy vision by paroxysmal <coughs> elevation of interocular pressure. Coronal endotheriitis presents the following findings. Localized coronal edema, posterior coronal deposit, coin region, and linear keratic precipitate, like rejection line. Iritis presents the following findings, coronal edema due to average IOP, posterior coronal deposit, and anterior chamber inflammation. The left picture is coin region with coronal edema. The right picture is keratic precipitate. Aqueous humor PCR is used for diagnosis. Treatment includes gancyclovir intravenous injection, eye drops, and topical corticosteroids. 
Next, we will talk about cytomegal virus retinitis. It is more common in severely immunocompromised individuals, such as patients with autoimmune immune disease, leukemia, migrant lymphoma, AIDS, and those who are using anti-cancer use drugs or immunosuspective drugs. Symptoms may be known or include vision loss. For diagnosis, blood tests and aqueous humor PCR are used. Here is a fundus examination. The left image shows a fan-shaped accumulation of white granular exhaustive plaques without hemorrhage. The right image shows yellow-white exhaustive spots with retinal hemorrhage and retinal edema around the spot <coughs> posterior pole vessel. However, vitreous and anterior chamber inflammation is mild despite severe retinal inflammation. The treatment includes systemic administration of antiviral drugs, eye drops, and intravitreal injection of gancycobil. Regimentalness retinal detachment is an important complication complication of CMV retinitis. This is because retinitis causes necrosis and thinning of all layers of the retina. Now, I will show you two cases related to cytomegaloviruses retinitis. Case one is 77-year-old woman. At the end of November 2021, she visited her previous doctor because she was aware of vision loss in her right eye. She was referred to our hospital in December after finding inflammatory retinal vascular seizing, retinal hemorrhage, and vitreous opacity. She had scleroderma and was taking prednisolone and 11 mg and a day microphenolate <coughs> morphate and immunosuspensant. This is fundus examination of her right eye. Vitreous opacity, occlusive panretinal vasculitis, and granular retinitis were observed. However, there was no inflammation in the anterior chamber. Here is fluorescent fundus angiography. Extremely extensive non perfusion areas, including the central phobia, were observed. Blood tests were positive for C7 HRP and aqueous humor this direct strip PCR was CMB positive, leading to a diagnosis of cytomegaloviruses related retinitis. Considering renal function, an initial dose of 900 mg per day of oral pancycobal was started. Panretinal Photographation was performed for non perfusion area, and oral bancycobil was also completed, but a vitreous hemorrhage occurred one month later. Vitrectomy was promptly performed. No retinal detachment was observed, and the case of vitreous hemorrhage was thought to be retinal neovascularization from non perfusion area. Two months later, intense anterior chamber inflammation and new retinal focus appeared. Aqueous humor PCR was performed and it was CMV positive and the patient was restarted on oral bargansicable. Two months later, she had vitreous hemorrhage again. Since the cause of vitreous hemorrhage was thought to be neovascularization, a free intravascular injection was administered, and the hemorrhage improved. In summary, we experienced a case that exhibits a clinical course different from the typical progression of CMV retinitis. Case two is a 71-year-old woman. In March 2019, she became aware of visual loss in her left eye. In April, she visited her previous doctor and was referred to our hospital because uveitis was suspected. 
she was achieved remission after six courses of chemotherapy for migrant lymphoma. In addition, she had type 2 diabetes. This is anterior segment of her left eye. Cells in anterior chamber, keratic precipitates, and anterior vitreous opacities were observed. Corrected visual acuity in her left eye had decreased to 0 0.6. This is Fanda's examination of her left eye. Vitreous opacity, inflammatory retinal vascular seizing, and granular exudate were observed. Broad tests and aqueous humor PCR were performed, and only PCR was CMV positive. We diagnosed cytomegaloviruses related retinitis started 1800 milligram per day of oral volume. Two months later, iris rubeosis and posterior iris synechia appeared in her left eye. Gancyclovir intervitreal injection was performed twice, but there was no improvement, and the vitreous opacity tended to, to work. Therefore, vitrectomy was performed. Here is a surgery video. Vitreous with hemorrhage was excited Excise the hemorrhage has due to retinal neovascularization. Granular exudates were observed in superior part of retina. Two weeks after surgery, vitreous opacity and iris rubeosis remain, and vitreous hemorrhage also appeared. So we performed the intravitreal injection of gansaclovir and aflipercept. After that, the rubiosis and vitreous hemorrhage eventually disappeared. When the vitreous opacity disappeared, a fluorescent fundus angiography was performed. There was extensive non-perfusion area and panretinal photogravitation was performed. We diagnosed this case as chronic retinal necrosis, which is different from classic CMV retinitis. I will summarize case one and two. These cases have a different background and finding from typical CMV retinitis as follows. Partially immunosuppressive conditions, intense inflammation such as vitreous opacity or anterior chamber inflammation. Extensive retinal ischemia with vitreous hemorrhage or iris rubiosis. The kinds of these are newly defined as chronic retinal necrosis, which is different from classic CMV retinitis. In 2013, Schneider et al. proposed a new concept of disease caused by CMV, which is characterized by peripheral retinal regions and retinal vascular occlusion, such as uh, acute retinal necrosis with slow progression. It is more common in slight to moderate immunocompromised non-HIV patients, such as the elderly, diabetes, and steroid and or immunosuppressant drug users. This table is com comparison of classic CMV retinitis and CRN. Findings and treatment of CRN differ from CMV retinitis because of strong inflammation and extensive ischemia occur. So there are three patterns of cytomegaloviruses eye in infection when chronic retinal lymphosis is included. This is Schematic table of the spectrum of necrotizing herpetic retinitis. Clinical phenotype is determined by the cause causative viral agent, current immune function, and or time cause such as acute, subacute, or chronic. Both acute retinal necrosis and progress ocular retinal necrosis are accurately caused by HSV 
BZB must have different, different immune status and pathogenic mechanism. CMV and CRN are similarly inter, interrelated. In this table, I think that coronal endotheliitis iritis is classified here. This is the last type. CMV ocular infections have different phenotypes depending on patient's immune status. Aqueous humor direct PCR is very useful for the diagnosis of CMV infection. A new COSEM, chronic retinal necrosis, have been proposed and it is characterized characterized by severe inflammation and extensive ischemia compromised to CMV retinitis. Fluorescence fundus and geography is useful for diagnosis and it is often required retinal photogravation and anti-VEGF antibody intervenal injection. That's all my presentation. Thank you so much for attention despite your busy schedule today. Thank you, Dr. Ito. Uh, very interesting uh, new concept of um, CMV retinitis. Yeah, we learn a lot from your presentation. So we will move uh, to the next uh, session for the commentary from the panelists. From Universitas Indonesia, we will have uh, Professor Ratna, uh, Dr. Lukman, Dr. Made Susianti, and me as uh, the panel panelists. So, um, Okay, so I will give uh, the chance for the panelists to give questions or comment. Maybe Professor Ratna or Dr. Susi. Yes. But maybe uh, I will be first to ask, uh, to give the comment from uh, regarding the case from the, the Kyoto uh, presentation. So actually this, uh, this uh, case is, uh, two cases, I see is uh, uh yeah probably we will uh so far we 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 haven't seen what uh, uh complete about uh, the case like that so probably i will ask to uh, the presenter probably also the panelists from the japan so it seems that the crn clinical manifestation seems very varied and mix uh, of intraocular manifestations such as like uh, has been uh, mentioned before like granular retinitis, occlusive vasculitis, and also retinal necrosis, where all of this manifestation could make a poor, poorer prognosis. So based on your study about these uh, cases, so what is the early clinical uh, features or clinical manifestation of CRN that we should aware of uh, or to prevent a further severe cause of the disease? And the, the second is, uh, Beside of the treatment for the anti-CMV uh, therapy, so is it offer by, uh, is it possible or is it uh, 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 give uh, uh, can can be given to overcome the intraocular inflammation? Uh, we can give the uh, anti-inflammation like steroids, uh, and when we have to give it uh, properly, because of the condition of this patient, usually actually not immunocompromised, but sometimes the patient already has uh, like a steroid treatment or an elderly age patient. Maybe my question is to, uh, to, to the to patient. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Susi. So maybe Dr. Ito or Nagata-sensei or Deguchi. Dr. Deguchi will have the, uh, answer the questions. So the first question is how to de detect the early sign of um, the chronic uh, retinal necrosis related to CMV. And the second question is, um, should we start a, like a steroid for uh, combining the treatment of the anti-CMV uh, treatment? Thank you. You are still I, uh, yes. I don't know uh, about the usefulness of steroid or other anti-inflammatory uh, treatment. 
uh, and uh, the uh, 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 it's, uh, we, uh, we can diagnose uh, the CRN uh, by uh, 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 strong information and uh, 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 occlusive uh, parental vasculitis. Uh, and uh, uh, in my experience, uh, all patients with uh, CRN have had uh, uh, vitreous hemorrhage uh, and required vitrectomy. So, uh, and, uh, and um, uh, patients uh, have uh, partially uh, uh, immuno uh, uh, compromised. Uh, uh. Hmm? Uh, steroid. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, we we, uh, we don't uh, have uh, experience uh, of uh, use of, uh, of steroid. Thank you. So um so we just need to aware if we have any vitreous hemorrhage in patient with uh, immunosuppressive condition. So we should think about uh, CMV as the etiology. Is it right? Yeah. So the key point is the vitreous hemorrhage. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions? Uh, Dr. Ji, may I have a question? Yes, please, Prof. Ratna. I have a question for Dr. Lukman and also for uh, Dr. Ito. Uh, maybe Dr. Lukman can explain to us what is the unique or the specific sign of syphilis in the, in the eye, especially in the uveitis maybe, yeah? Uh, my second question is for Dr. Ito. I would like to know when do you define chronic? Because we understand we have a acute retinal necrosis, but when you dis when you said that this is a chronic, when do you define this is chronic phase, for example, something like that, yeah. Uh, and then my second question is also for Dr. Ito is. If you said that this is uh, uh, chronic chronic uh, retinitis related to CMV is a, a condition that also related to angiogenesis. Uh, my question is, uh, how, how is the pathogenesis? How is uh, the pathogenesis? I mean, how this MP can result uh, chronic angiogenesis and then uh, have, uh, and then cause the necrosis? Can you explain it to us? So maybe first okay. question, first Dr. Lukman, yes. Okay, thank you, Prof. Pratna. Uh, mostly patient with ocular and syphilis with the, uh, the manifestation mostly uh, posterior uveitis, and then we will we can see that patient have like narrow retinitis, and sometimes we also can see the macular star. Yeah, but the very important that from analysis, so we, we ask about the promiscuity uh, in the patient. Yeah. In our experience, most of our patients with the ocular syphilis is male sex with males. 
yeah uh, but sometimes also had by like by uh, bisexual so that's very important for Varna. and then uh, we can check also for the serology like from the RPR and the PHA yeah yeah that's so, very important so the serologic test is uh, the most not the most uh, very important for us uh, Dr. Lukman yeah yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lukman. Um, and so I will move to the next question from Professor Ratna uh, to uh, Dr. Nagata or Dr. Dekuchi. And how do you explain uh, the vascularization, the neovascularization related to the uh, CMV? Is there any specific mechanism? Uh, so, uh, Specific mechanism is not uh, is unknown, but the bilas uh, make the occlusion of the vessels, and after that, uh, they make a neovascularization and make some kind of inflammation. So, but the specific mechanism is unknown now, I think. Uh, but, but Dr. Prof. Higo, uh, yeah? Yes, please. Prof. Ratna first and Dr. Lukman then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Hideto, uh, or when you said uh, chronic retinal necrosis, do you still uh, have to be positive to the CMV from PCR? Yeah. So we use the direct spread PCR and we check the CMV positive. And the time course is chronic. So, and they, they are, uh, our patients have the occlusive uh retinitis so we diagnosed crn okay thank you doctor Hideto. yeah yeah <laughs> so Fatna, maybe uh i can answer it. that uh we have some research yeah uh for cmp retinitis and also for cmp infection the cmp infections is very uh important in some case or some cases of like atherosclerosis. We already uh, did, did the research. The in patient with the CMV infection or patient with the seropositive for CMV, especially in HIV patient, uh, the tunica intima media uh, from the Doppler uh, ultrasound in the carotis, the the diameter of the this vascular is decreased or smaller than in normal condition, and we also check for the retinal retinal vessels caliber in patient with the seropositive CMV, especially in HIV. The retinal caliber also decreased by time, yeah, in HIV patient. So I think in your case. It looks like like CMV vasculopathy or uh, CMV atherosclerosis in the retina, because in the fundus skin angiography, yeah, we can see also very uh, huge uh, ischemic area, non perfusion area, then necrosis. Because in the necrosis, yeah, we can see uh, uh, directly from the uh, fundus photo and not from the fundus fluorescein angiography, especially like patient with acute retinal necrosis or patient with posterior auto retinal necrosis. Yeah, you can see the retinitis is very huge and very uh, uh, profuse in the in the area, it depends. In acute necrosis, we can see in the peripheral side and the posterior auto retinal necrosis, we can see in the posterior pole. Uh, pole. Yeah, uh, from the Fundus fluorescein angiography that you saw us, it looks like like vasculopathy, yeah, and then uh, yeah, it is uh, it's already proven that CMP is very important in atherosclerosis, and it's also related to the 
uh, heart problem, doctor. Doctor. Yes. But in your case, the CM the CMV is it positive or negative? I think the patient already negative yeah? Uh, positive yeah, doctor. Ito. No, no. In your case, in, in your research. Ah, uh, zero positive actually, prof. Tatna. Zero positive, but uh, but yeah, there's negative. no signs. Yeah, no, there's no sign no. of CMV retinitis. No, yeah, but no sign in, of CMV infection. Yeah, yeah, in a cohort study, we can see that tunica intima media and also retina vessels caliber decreased by time in HIV patient, uh, which patient also have zero positive for CMV. Uh, in this literature study, uh, the atherosclerosis, uh, we also can find like a CMV materials in this plug in that uh, from the vessels. But, but the telopan, the difference in this case is uh, they found CMV positive in yes. this patient. Yeah, CMV infection. Yeah, but, that is the uh, difference. Yeah, but if you see the fundus photo, the necrosis area is not larger than your non-perfusion area. Is it correct, Dr. Ito? Which which slide do you want us to see, Dr. Lukman? <laughs> okay, fundus. Okay, fundus photo and fundus fluorescent angiography. Dr. Ito, Dr. would you mind to share again your slides uh, and show your slide? Oh. Show the right. Fundus, yeah. uh, fundus photo and also the fluorescent color, angiography. Yes, color color fundus photo and yeah. If we see in here, the vascular vessels, yeah, in the retina is already uh, scleros sclerosis. Okay, the fundus first, the fundus photo first. Fundus first, this. The, the, ah, yeah, this is the is a necrosis area. You already mentioned it is a granular retinitis, but it is smaller. But if we see again from your, I think the first photo. Ah, okay. In this photo, we also can see that this is sclerosing vessels. Yeah, and then the next photo, or the left. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Another photo. La, okay, next. Next. Next, and B2S hemorrhage. No. Yeah, okay. And then after the tractomy. In case two. Yeah, okay, maybe. Maybe in, in case, case two, yeah. yeah. I forget. This is okay. Next. Exam. Yeah, this is fetal retinal hemorrhage. Um posterior eye this can yeah. Um okay. Maybe, maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. And next. Next. Ah, okay, this this slide. Okay, stop. Okay, you can see. I hope that I can <laughs> show the, the the cursor. This is clearing uh, vessels, and then the uh, the 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 optic nerve is already pale. Also, it is like a vasculopathy and then sclerosis of the retina vessels. Yeah, and then it is also proven by the fundus fluorescent angiography. Yeah, because uh, Prof. Rana, we also have some case. Almost similar with the this case, but not in same VA retinitis, but uh, HIV vasculopathy. HIV and CMV can cause the sclerosis of the retina vessels also. And then it's already proven by the fundus fluorescent angiography. The non proficient area is very huge. Yeah. Ah, okay. This, this one. one. Yeah, yep. this one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is for the, uh, the occlu in, uh, occluded vessels in here. Occluded vessels also in the temporal side and inferior side. In the, tempor uh, in the temporal superior and the temporal inferior. So uh, Dr. Lukman mean uh, that the extensive retinal ischemia is due to the vasculopathy. Yes. Uh, vasculopathy uh, not directly to the CMV, but uh, no. is the immunologic response to the CMV? No, this is because of CMV, Prof. Ratna. Directly? Yes. Oh, a patient also had 
in the animal suppression drugs ya dokter itu ya. This is very old woman ya. Yeah. And the second patient is how old the patient? Seventy something. Seventy yeah. something. Ya yeah, ya. Yeah. Ya yeah, seventy one. Ya. Yeah. Malignant lymphoma. Ya. Yeah. Dok uh, Dokter G uh, Yulia. Is this patient uh, CMP positive at the beginning? Yes. So at yeah. The yeah. CMP positive. Uh, positive. And then uh, we, uh, Dr. Ito gave the falgaziclovir for two yes. weeks. Yes. And then after that, after two weeks, uh, the patient developed uh, erythrobiosis and then uh, hemorrhage, vitreal hemorrhage. Yes. yes. Yeah. We so uh, how long after the uh, falgaziclovir given the patient developed uh, rubiosis? So, yeah, yes, yes. yes so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you know the how long after the, this is the at May 8, 2019? And then how long is the interval for getting worsening? No oh, interval. It's quite long or how many months or year between uh, treatment of the cyclopher and then uh, worsening of the eye? So is it a chronic state? Yes. Or maybe you can move to the uh, next Maybe it's one, two yeah. weeks to oh, one two weeks. Month. Okay, it's so quite, it's quite it's short. Quite yeah. Fast, yeah. Yes. So very short. Um, interval between uh, the worsening of the treatment. Dr. Ito, when you do the vitreal hemorrhage, vitrectomy, do you also uh, examine the positivity of CMP from the vitreous hemorrhage? Hemorrhage. So maybe uh, that are May 20. So did you repeat the PCR examination from the vitreous? Oh. Uh, I I don't remember, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's quite long. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we might I, we don't use the uh, check the same way. Oh, okay. Yeah. I I I really want to understand whether the patient this patient having still having positive for CMP. Thank you. This is very interesting case. Yes, thank you for Pratna. So I think we should move to the next uh, session for the panelists from the Kyoto to give the comment for the um, resident uh, from Universitas Indonesia presentation. So would you mind give a question, Dr. Rikuchi or Dr. Nagata? Thank okay, you. can I ask? Uh, I'd like to ask to Dr. Burhana what my words. <laughs> Rusty, sorry, yeah, the Warren. pronunciation is not good. So, and I'm interested in the case of the tuberculosis. And you use the steroids for the optic neuritis like tuberculosis. Uh, the what is the concept of using steroids? It's did you use for the optic neuritis or for the treatment of tuberculosis? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. I'll try to answer the questions. So uh, in terms of uh, this case, uh, we started to initiate uh, the methylprednisol and uh, therapy uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, uh, in response to the inflammatory reaction and also for uh, the uh, optic neuritis. But I think uh, in cases like atypical neuritis, because uh, mm -hmm. in yeah. this case, uh, the course of the disease uh, because of the tuberculosis, uh, we need to think first to uh, give uh, the anti-tuberculosis uh, treatment before initiating the methylprednisolone. Because as previously, uh, the patient uh, uh, had uh, been administered uh, with methylprednisolone. Okay. However, the visual accuracy uh, began to decrease after the initiation of methylprednisolone before uh, the tuberculosis treatment. So I think maybe uh, my uh, seniors or professor doctors can uh, add a uh, comment to this. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you. And I'd like to ask Lakman Edward, doctor. Yeah. Yes. And 
So you uh, make a presentation about Zephyrus and the third case is very interesting. And Dr. Uh, Professor Sotozono mentioned about the keratitis. And is it common to make keratitis be, uh, by Jeffries? I have never seen such kind of patients, so. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Hideto. So actually, the peripheral ulcerative keratitis is very rarely related with the ocular mm, syphilis. Yeah. But in our case, uh, it is uh, positive for the serology test. Yeah, and then also uh, it improved by the surgery uh, and the treatment. Yeah, uh, yeah. We usually we if we, if we patient if we have patient with the peripheral ulcerative keratitis, we will treat or we will manage like uveitis also inflammatory intracranial inflammation. We will check the like uh, we have to rule out the infection. Such as syphilis, tuberculosis, especially, and also immunologies. Yeah, in patient with uh, like a vaginal granulomatosis and lupus erythematosus, and then also and other of uh, collagen diseases, can also make a peripheral ulcerative keratitis. If uh, some of this test positive, so we diagnose this patient with PUK, and then with if the test is negative, so we can move to like a moron ulcer. Okay, so is the condition similar to the creatitis or corneal ulcer by us, uh, rheumatoid arthritis? Yes. Or that kind of collagen yeah. disease? Okay. Yes. Is any further comment from Professor uh, Satotono? Yes. Uh, and, uh, can I share one slide? Yes, please. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, can you see my slide? Yes, we can see it. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, so data of Japan. So the fetus, uh, the increase of the fetus is growing problem in Japan. Mm -hmm. and, uh, almost 10 years ago, uh, very, very rare. But in the last year, over uh, 10,000 cases are reported. So and in 20s, uh, male and female are almost the same. But uh, over 30s, uh, man, uh, male patient is more, more than the female. And I think so. We have, I have no experience of zephyric ocular zephyrus, but I think so. In near future, we will, expect, we will meet uh, ocular zephyric cases. So thank you for your so, presentation today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Professor I think yeah, Indonesia also have similar problem now. It's now mm -hmm. a national issue mm -hmm. because the increasing of the syphilis uh, in Indonesia also. Oh. In 2022, we have yeah. more than 22,000 mm -hmm. patients mm -hmm. uh, based on the, our Ministry Wait, of Health sure. Data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have learned a lot from your presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much for all comments. So is there any other questions uh, remain uh, regarding both of the cases or experiences? Uh, Dr. Yulia yes, and Dr. Please. Chi, I'm interested, interested in your cases of syphilis in Japan. Uh, I'm not sure whether the amount is only for ocular syphilis or syphilis overall? So your presentation, your, oh yes, Professor, your slide? No, yeah, your slides show, is it the total number of syphilis or only the ocular syphilis? Uh, maybe. I think total number. Total number, is it right? Yeah. yeah. Total mm -hmm. number. Okay. Uh, if it's a total number, maybe, Maybe we can try to differentiate between the uh, clinical presentation of ocular syphilis in Indonesia and in Japan, Prochi. Mm -hmm. Because I think 
uh, most of our patients came to our clinic in in late stage. Mm. I'm not sure how is the condition in mm. in Japan. Um. If if uh, in Japan they are come more in earlier phase, maybe mm. we can we can tell and uh, anyone else that this is the condition in early phase, mm. and this is the condition in let's face for example something like that if I you want in, to uh, <laughs> i think in japan patients come to the hospital in early phase and with uveitis pan uveitis or uh posterior uveitis yes similar with us i think that's really interesting to uh compare the finding of the ocular syphilis uh, in Japan that shown like the early case and also in Indonesia that mostly are the uh, late case. So it's really interesting to compare both of the data, I think. Yes. So, yeah, okay. So any other questions? Um, uh, I have yes. uh, one question on to uh, Dr. Uh, Edward. Yeah. Uh, uh, I uh, I think uh, one of the characteristic uh, of syphilitic uh, uveitis is uh, ultra retinal uh, damage. Uh, do you know the mechanism of that? Okay. Uh, very difficult question. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're still not sure yet. Why uh, pallidum can be? It, it is in the neuro uh, optic nerve or on the retina. We still don't know because until until now, it is very difficult to get the positivity of treponema pallidum from the eye samples. Yeah. Uh, whether like the PCR or culture is very difficult to get the, the, the this paper from the eye. So we're still not sure this uh, condition caused by the syphil uh, the bacteria directly or from because of the antigen of the treponema pallidum. Yeah, maybe Prof. Ratna or Dr. Sasi, Dr. Yaliaziza. Yeah, the predilection side still question. Very lot of question from the predilection side. Yeah, still unclear mechanism. Mm. I think uh, syphilis is known as the great imitator, also, Dr. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we haven't we haven't not known yet about the direct mechanism of how syphilis can cause uh problem in the posterior part of the, uh, the eye, I think, because every mechanism can can mimic the, the syphilis, the ocular syphilis, I think. Maybe we can learn it from the dermatology, yeah? how the syphilis infected the genitum. Maybe we can, we can try to learn it from it. But right now, I don't think I have the good answer for you, Dr. Ito. Yeah. Yes, any other comment? Um, a very interesting discussion. So I think, yeah, this is the ninth. Uh, uh, so we learned uh, many, many experiences from both university. Um, so uh, we will still have uh, three uh, meeting more. Uh, after the uh, summer uh, vacation, so we'll be on the September. Uh, it will talk about the eyelid uh, reconstruction. So we will have another meeting on September. So I uh, think um, if there's no other questions, um, before I close the meeting, we would like to invite all of you to attend the APAO, the next year APAO 2024. So yes, uh, so this is, um, so maybe we would like to share the uh, video of the APAO 2024. So please, would you mind to start the video? So you can uh, please come uh, to Indonesia and also 
I think it's better to yeah to visit Jakarta University of and Bali and Bali. So both, <laughs> so yeah, we invite you all to come. So how about the video, Doctor Dita? Can you share the video? Okay. Okay, I think the video is not running. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so unfortunately, it's not running. Um, so yeah. Oh, okay, now it come. So please enjoy Bali and also attend the APAO and visit Jakarta also. Please start the video. Okay, our program's annual meeting will be held in 2024. This will be our third time hosting and there is no better time to travel to Bali. We are ready to welcome you and offer a wonderful Congress experience in Bali. The APAO Congress will also provide delegates with networking sessions to facilitate discussion and create opportunities to collaborate with colleagues. I'm very much looking forward to meeting you at the 39th APAO Congress in Bali. See you in 2024. The APAO Congress in Bali will be one of the most important comebacks since the pandemic. And we are eager to see our colleagues from across the region and around the world. Let us work together to strengthen our collaboration for the future of our community. We congratulate and thank the Indonesian Ophthalmologist Association, ADAMI, for hosting the upcoming 39th APAO Congress in Bali, Indonesia. The APAO has now 25 national member societies and 11 subspecialty member societies representing over 118,000 ophthalmologists in our region or over 51% of the total number of ophthalmologists in the world. We wish the Padami a spectacularly successful Congress in 2024. Indonesian Ophthalmology Association, or DAMI, with more than 3,000 ophthalmologists in Indonesia, are delighted to welcome you all to Bali, the magical islands of Indonesia. We hope you enjoy the iconic Bali landmarks and its cultural places and many activities. See you in Bali! next year. Thank you. Sampai jumpa. Terima kasih. We are excited to welcome you back and enjoy Bali. Thank you very much. So, um, so please uh, come to Bali and also Indonesia. Yeah, we are inviting all of you on February 22 until 25th. And also we would like to um, remind you that the abstract uh, submission will, will be closed mm -hmm. on August um, 2023. So it's better be prepared to submit all of your abstract. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much. Um, would you mind to open your camera all so we can take a picture? 
And yeah, today participant is 74, 75 participants. Yeah, it's a huge number today. So um, maybe Dr. Buna, uh, would you mind to take the picture? Yes, ma'am. Okay, uh, please turn on your camera. And let's take a picture for slide one, three, two, one. Okay, for the next slide. One, two, three. Okay, next slide. One, two, three. And the last slide, one, two, three. Yes, uh, that's all, ma'am. Thank you. Yep, thank yeah. you very much thank for very much. all your attention. So um, see you on September. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank, you thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you, so Prof. Chi. See you in Bali. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone wants to visit yeah. you. Bye. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we can have yeah, another awesome. uh, on February meeting in Jakarta and then continue <laughs> with Bali. Yeah. Good night. Bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. You. Thank Good you. night. Bye. Thank you. Recording stopped.